Welcome to Mayo Medical Laboratory's Hot Topics. These presentations provide short discussion of current topics and may be helpful to you in your practice. Our speaker for this program is Dr. Glenn Roberts, a professor of laboratory medicine and pathology and microbiology at Mayo Clinic, as well as a consultant in the Division of Clinical Microbiology. Dr. Roberts discusses the features of specific organisms under direct microscopic examination using multiple preparations. This module examines zygomycetes. Thank you, Dr. Roberts. Thank you, Sharon, for that introduction. I have nothing to disclose. The next slide shows you that this is an ongoing presentation that focuses on the individual or groups of organisms as seen in the direct microscopic examination of clinical specimens. The next slide shows some of the stains that are used in clinical microbiology and in pathology for detecting microorganisms, not necessarily the fungi. However, the fungi can be detected if one thinks clinical microbiology when you're looking at the slides. The next slide shows you a continuation of those stains, the different stains that are used in the same manner. And examples would be the pap smear used in, in cytotechnology area where you see uh, pap smears or respiratory tract specimens and you might find an organism in there that you might not expect to see but you can see fungi very well and then histopathologic sections using the methenamine silver stain, the PAS and H&E stains those are designed for detecting or, uh, for tissue architecture as well as detecting uh, organisms and so you just need to be aware of, of what might be present and just continue, keep that in your mind when you're looking at these stains because you might find a fungal organism there that, that uh, you, you don't expect to be there. The next slide shows you that we're going to talk about wide polysyseptate hyphae that would be present in a clinical specimen if it happened, you happen to see one in your laboratory. And if you saw that, you would think about the group of fungi called the zygomycetes. And, and now they're decided to call this group the mucorales. Uh, the, the name changes have been frequent with this group. Now I think mucorales might be the better term. Um, and the name of the infection used to be called zygomycosis. Prior to that it was called mucormycosis. And now they would like to call it mucormycosis again. So as long as you understand what we're talking about, it really doesn't make much difference what you call it, in my opinion. If In terms of what you see in a direct microscopic examination uh, with these polysyseptate hyphae, you notice that many times in a biopsy, for example, the hyphae fragment into smaller pieces. You can find some septi in some of these, and that's why we call them septate because there are just a few septations present. If you happen to see a dressing or something where the organism can grow unrestricted, you'll find that they look ribbon-like. And another thing that I think is important to remember is that Aspergillus flavus, one of the organisms that causes disease in leukemia patients, can actually form us, uh, have hyphae that are septate and large, just like these zygomycetes. And so when you look at a direct examination, the odds are that it's probably going to be a, one of the mucorales, but it can be Aspergillus flavus. And what you do is you try to look to see for the frequency of the septations in there. And if there are more septations than you would expect to see of the zygomycete, it's probably going to be Aspergillus flavus. Some of the mucorales that we talk about and we see in the clinical laboratory are Rhizopus mucor in Absidia, and now the name has been changed for Absidia is called Lecthymia. And so there are a number of new name changes going on here as a result of some of the molecular taxonomy and as a result of people looking back in the literature and, and finally uh, determining that some of these organisms were named something else long before they were called what we have commonly called them. And so they go back to the original name and, and start there. The next slide shows you a direct examination of, of a piece of material taken from a dressing from a young person who was uh, riding a motorcycle and had an accident and skidded down a gravel road and the arm was, was uh, actually uh, damaged and, and the skin was removed from the surface of the arm. It, played, it was debrided and then the dressing was placed on there, a gauze dressing was placed on there and then it became infected. The dressing was taken off and some of the material from the dressing was put on a slide and this is what you're seeing here. The reason for the long ribbon-like hyphae is because they were growing on that gauze dressing unrestricted. If you look at about 1 o'clock, maybe it's hard to tell in this, it's uh, the upper right corner there is a 
vertical hypha that has a septation in it. And that's what well, we call them palsy septate hyphae. When we see these long branching uh, fungi like this that are wide, they're twisted and ribbon like. Now, oftentimes, they fra sometimes will fragment into smaller pieces, but when they're unrestricted, you see it like this. This is not something that you're going to see all the time. They are sparsely septated or palsy septate, and sometimes you again you have to think about Aspergillus flavus. Next slide shows you a blood vessel that has actually has the whole outer wall of the artery filled with hyphae of zygomycete. This is probably an immunocompromised patient. And if you look at the interior of that blood vessel, you'll see that it contains a large number of uh, probably platelets in there. And what happens is these hyphae actually project into the artery. And the, the platelets in the white and red cells all aggregate together along with the hyphae. And a clotter of thrombus forms in there. And then basically what happens is the blood flow uh, distal to that stops and the whole area down there becomes necrotic and so a hallmark of these diagomyces is that they cause a lot of necrosis particularly in the sinuses and diabetics or people are people who are very prone to getting infections with these diagomyces and this happens to be a problem from a case of, of a disseminated disease when you see it in an artery like this the next slide shows you the hyphae in there that are large and there are a number of septations in there this one actually came from an eye in the case of end ophthalmitis, where the interior of the eye was totally infected and the eye was removed because there was no, no real effective treatment for that disease. But you can see how large the hyphae are and look at the septations. There are a few in there. And notice also that they're fragmented into smaller pieces. So some of the hallmark features we talked about are shown on this uh, slide. The next slide uh, shows you the kind of branching that you might see. But it also shows you, this is a biopsy, and it shows you that this organism fragmented into many pieces. And sometimes it can branch, usually not at a 45 degree angle, mostly at a 90 degree angle, but it can branch pretty much anyway. But I think what you're seeing here are mostly fragmented pieces of these large hyphae. The next slide, this is a silver stain, methanamine silver stain. And every once in a while, you'll see that the silver stain will deposit some silver around the perimeter of some of these hyphae, but they don't stain all that well with the silver stain, in, at least in our hands here at Mayo. And the stain that we've used in the past has been one that has been here for many, many years. And so what we did is we used it as a, a characteristic of zygomycetes. If we saw a zygomycete that uh, really didn't stain very well, uh, we would pretty much know that's what it was. If it stained, it probably turned out to be something like aspergillus. Well, evidently that was something peculiar to the stain that we use. We now changed methods in, in the laboratory, and the zygomycetes now stain with the silver stain. So basically what you're seeing in here are, are hyphae that are stained with the silver stain. They don't appear to be septate, except the weather is one about maybe 6 o'clock up from the bottom. There you can see a clear septum there. This is what you would see fragmented pieces of hyphae and occasional septum. The next slide shows you this literally the same thing except there are lots of fragmented pieces in there and they don't have these these don't didn't stain with the silver stain. This is from the old stain. It was very helpful to have that because we could distinguish the zygomycete from an aspergillus. And I don't think anyone here remembers what stain we used, how we use it and why we use it and why they changed it. But nevertheless that's the way it worked. This is a frozen section from um, the lung of a young boy, a 15-year-old boy who had a history of leukemia. He was in remission and he came out of remission and developed pulmonary infection and this was a part of the biopsy and this is what we saw in the frozen section and there are large hyphae in there that have occasional septations They're fragmented and this turned out to be a zygomycete. Uh, this young boy ended up uh, having uh, this organism grow into and surround the pulmonary artery and uh, did not survive the episode because there was just too much involvement. The next slide shows you another vessel and in the interior of this vessel you can see all the hyphae and you can see the cross sections of hyphae in there and again what would happen is a thrombus would develop inside there and include that artery and then distal to that would be no blood flow and a large area of necrosis where you would probably see the organism. These zygomycetes or mucorales produce lots of necrosis. And the next slide shows you something. This is from a brain. Uh, this is a silver stain from the brain. 
and you see what looked like hypi in there. And it's a bit disturbing to see this in a brain biopsy because it's usually you don't think about it being there except in cases of patients who are diabetics and develop brain abscess. The next slide shows you essentially the same thing. You can see the filaments are very long in there. And then the next slide shows you something different. These are actually capillaries that are seen in the brain. And if you look in the interior of those capillaries, you'll see that there are red cells that are stacked in there. That's called rouleau, a rouleau formation. And those cells are stacked in there. They're red cells. And what we've been looking at are capillaries found in the brain uh, stained by the, uh, the silver stain. It didn't really take up the stain, but they look like hyphae at first glance. So you, you might think about that when you're looking at brain biopsies. The next slide is a pap smear of the respiratory tract specimen. And you can see that there are large hyphae in there. There's one in there that's branching in a right angle. The hyphae are not of standard size. They're any particular size. Some are very large and some are more narrow. So they look different ways when you start to look at them. And here's an example of one where there's a distorted filament in there, a portion, at least a segment of one, and it has a septum by it. And you can see the very, a lot of variation with these mucoralies. They, they don't all look the same every time you look at different specimens. They sometimes will form some unusual forms. The next slide shows you the same thing. This is the mucoralies with large hyphae. And then here I don't see, I see one area which might show a septum up about maybe 11 o'clock. Other than that, it's just, just filaments. This is a pap smear. This is another, next slide is another pap smear showing you areas that are just very large down. And you notice they narrow down to hyphae that are smaller size. And it just shows you the variation of things that you can see with these zygomycetes. Again, you need to look at the whole slide.